Welcome to my YouTube channel. My guests on Facing the Canon are Nikki and Silla Lee, founders of The Marriage Course. Nikki and Silla Lee, welcome back to Facing the Canon. Oh, it's lovely to be great back to with, be you. with you. Oh, it's a delight. We had uh, great fun in the last episode. And if you didn't see the last programme, can I encourage you uh, to view it? Uh, but tell us, who are you and what do you do? <laughs> well, we are on the staff at a church no, in we're central not. London. Well, we are. But first and foremost, we're married. Oh, yeah. oh sorry. See, he Stop needs me. He needs yeah, me. Get the priorities so, right. Exactly. So we met over nearly 50 years ago mm -hmm. as teenagers, fell in love, started going out and got married four years later. Uh, we've been married for nearly 45 years and we have four children and quite a lot of grandchildren. And nine grandchildren. Nine no. grandchildren. Yeah, so that's very central. Oh, to very who we are. important. <laughs> And we are on the staff as well <laughs> at our church in central London, Holy Trinity Brompton, known as HTB. Been there since 1985. And you currently um, oversee a number of courses. Tell us what they are. Uh, well, we started developing our pre-marriage course, which initially was just for those who were getting married in our church. And then people started telling their friends and it grew and grew. And... Uh, that That's, was a long time ago. And that we're continuing to run to this day, the pre-marriage course. And then uh, 1996, we started the marriage course. And that was to follow on from the pre-marriage course, people who'd got married, thinking it would be in their first five years of marriage. And then we found couples were coming who'd been married for 10, 20, 40 or more years. And uh, we realised this was helpful for couples to invest in their in their marriage so those are our main two courses and then at the same time as i said we have four children and um in 1996 actually um our children were sort of um well 15 and under and um we actually started um a, a parenting course and then subsequently a parenting teenagers course because Lots of people, particularly in our church community, were saying, oh, it's so challenging doing this parenting. So we, we developed those two courses as well. Now, what would you say, Scylla, to um, uh, women who are, are Christians, uh, they really would like to get married, yeah. and, um, but Christians aren't asking them out on yeah. a date, but non-Christians are. Mm. And what would you say to them, what oh. advice? I'd say it's agony, agony, agony. And I just want to say, I, I think you are incredibly courageous and I hope that you, you will almost certainly have a stronger faith than, than other people not in that situation because you know, um, yeah, it's a hard situation to be in. I would also want to say, I know women in that situation who have felt unless they they meet and get together with someone who shares their faith it's going to be a challenging relationship yes and so they have actually continued to be single and we have some remarkable single women friends who have lived and are living the most incredible lives of of being used by God, of being the life and soul of the party and are living life to the full. Now, that doesn't mean that they wouldn't love to have a partner alongside, but I can honestly tell you that they, they are living life in a remarkable way. And I, I would want to encourage you, a partner isn't the only thing and it's not going to bring you the fulfillment that actually our fulfillment is in Jesus. And that's a hard road sometimes. We've been involved as well for many years with Alpha, which started at our church, HTV. And people we know in that situation where they are going out with somebody who is not a Christian, who doesn't have faith, they've brought them to Alpha 
And sometimes it's through Alpha that then yes. that's been a forum in which they can discuss and come to faith themselves. And, and that's led to many relationships and marriages. But you're, um, you've got a marriage book and it's called uh, The Marriage no, Book. <laughs> very <laughs> creative. We're not very yeah. very, no, <laughs> actually, and it really is. I, was, um, I, I have read the book uh, full of incredible insights and, and wisdom. Um, you, you talk about a wheel. Tell us about the wheel and, and, and the seven components of the wheel. Highlight those for us. Well, there, there are different aspects to, to building a marriage, of which the, the seven segments of the wheel, we, we start with how do we strengthen the, the connection between us? Because end of the day, having a strong marriage is about being well connected. At an but, emotional level, yeah, particularly. So what do we do to, to strengthen that? We talk about the importance of we must have quality time together. We talk about one of the best bits of advice that we got a year into our marriage was have a date night once a week. And up to that time, we were so busy. We were living in you know, central London, lots of social engagements, church activities. We never spent real quality time. Sometimes in the car, we managed to snatch a conversation. We started to have a date night once a week. And pretty well, we've kept that up for 44 so, and a half so years. So how did that work out, Scylla, when you had little children? Oh, good question. Um, we have our date night at home. So we make it special and different to any other night of the week. And we would um, make a nice meal, maybe two courses, or even three, open a bottle of wine and, um, and then just light the candles, put on the music, not try not to watch the telly though though we would i mean now we have you know we'll say let me let's make it a film night yes um but um and then we would just have conversations and and connect like nikki's saying we'd find out how each other really are and it's it's being together isn't it which yeah. is the important thing when our lives are just so busy yes uh, and having fun it having is fun. having fun because actually i'd say for many, many couples, we're busy, we're working, we've got challenges, you know, kids, stress, whatever. And actually, just to have fun and relax and discover what, why we fell in love in the first place, that's what a date night is really, really. And it's about. often been a challenge. It's, and it's either a challenge because we're just exhausted and think, oh gosh, can we make the effort? Or it's a challenge because life is so busy, can we find this time? Or, uh, Nikki is brilliant at this, when we're really, really busy and we've got deadlines of things and we've got marriage time, so, you know, date night in our diary. And I say, do you know, I really, really think we should finish this piece of work. And he says, absolutely not. Yeah. We are having our date. And am I so glad once we're in the date, sure. I know, oh, I really needed this time just to relax and enjoy and talk and, Excellent. you know, not work. What's the second component? Second component is communication. And uh, we talk about how we need to be good at talking, disclosing what's going on inside, talking about our feelings, which uh, speaking personally, I don't do naturally. <laughs> I have to I have to remember to tell Scylla if I'm anxious about something. But when I do, I feel so much better. And then surprise, surprise, we talk about listening. Yes. And I'm sure you can't guess, but um, I'm much better at talking and not so good at listening. So I have had to learn a lot about listening because listening in a relationship is so key. And the power of being a good listener it gives so much value to the other person. But how, how do you communicate with each other uh, without sending the, the wrong vibes? Because even sometimes, oh, it's very important to be honest. But then when you're honest, you offend your partner because you've just been honest. Yes. And they've maybe mis misunderstood what you've said. Yes. What well, do you do? My, my, what my big learning is that I don't necessarily say it straight away, I think it because that is when I've hurt Nikki. I say something because I'm feeling passionately or I feel misunderstood or I feel upset. So I say, well, you know, this is ridiculous. And actually I hurt him. 
And I've now realized I should zip up and wait for a better moment, a better time, perhaps go outside and go for a walk for 10 minutes, come back, calm down. And then I choose my words more carefully and I've thought about what's he thinking and you know, that sort of thing. So we can all change the way we react and respond and we can all learn to be more sort of thinking about what the other ones you know sensitive to and i think one of the great dangers in a in a long marriage is that we think we know what the other is is thinking and actually of course when we start having a proper conversation we discover we don't it's not actually what they thought and even asking a very simple question of each other is there anything you're you're worried about or anxious about can reveal extraordinary things we've been We've been together with this person, well, in lockdown, we've been together 24-7, and yet they can be thinking and feeling things that we didn't know about. Yeah. So, so I think that's where, why communication is so central for, for all of us, uh, Absolutely. For us as much as any other couple. And, I know. That, and that leads on to the third sort of part of the wheel, What's which that? is resolving conflict. Okay, how do we do that? Well, it's got to have a foundation of good communication because again often you know it's misunderstanding that causes the issue and and i think we have to uh, we talk about this thing of you know something can come between you and it blows up and so much so that you literally can't communicate you can't sort of hear each other you can't see each other you know you've got this thing in between you and actually we talk about putting it out in front and then moving together and addressing the issue like this, so you're together. And that can be, I mean, that sounds very simple and sort of simplistic, but actually it means that you then have to discuss this issue. And then you're kind of identifying what the issue is, but you're understanding where each other's coming from. Now, sometimes that can be very challenging. And we've known, and we know hundreds of couples who've experienced this, that actually as you learn things that you've upset your partner because you say this or do this or don't do this, and that can be really challenging. Once you've said it, you've listened to each other, you may have had to apologize and say sorry and forgive, you are much closer. Yes. And that's what happens. But so often we don't go there, you know? and. Conflict can either just be pushed under the carpet and all these resentments build up or conflict explodes and everybody's like, you know, it's not a safe place to be. But sometimes it's interesting, it, it, it could be a little minor incident or a minor infringement uh, that kind of knocks the whole thing down, isn't it? Mm. That's been festering. Mm. And I think sometimes that's because it's built on a lot of other incidents and and after conflict we talk about the power of forgiveness and w we get couples to to talk about whether there are ways that they have hurt each other in the past that they haven't talked about that have just got buried because at the end of the day where where we hurt each other it needs to be he result needs to be healed it can't just be buried and it's i think if there's if you get more and more buried hurt then a tiny thing can suddenly the whole thing erupts and stuff comes out from the past and and sometimes it can take real courage mm. to be able to say when you did this when you did that i felt really hurt but 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 if the other person can listen to it if they can take responsibility and then forgiveness it's amazing the the freedom that can come and we use the analogy, um, it was an experience I had many years ago of a blocked drain outside our house and uh, I, you know, it was during a thunderstorm and the, there was lots of water sloshing around and a friend and I had to get this drainage rod get to, to, to get it in the drain. We realised we couldn't get the rod the right place. One of us had to get into the drain and this was horrible, stinking, dirty water. We actually had to get in there in order to use the rod at a proper angle. 
He's one of the best friends I've ever had. <laughs> he did it. He chose. He volunteered he chose. to jump down into the drain. He shoved her with this rod, three shoves, and there was this wonderful sound, sort of started off as a gurgling sound, then a sucking, then a rushing noise. The drain was cleared. All this filthy water just rushed away. And that for us has been an analogy of what can happen when we heal some a way that we've hurt each other. Suddenly, it can happen very suddenly and quickly when you actually do it, when you face it, and then the whole relationship can feel different. Absolutely. But it, it can yeah. feel like it gets worse before it gets yeah. better, because the facing it is the challenging bit. But as, as with the drain analogy, once you know, you've got down into the dirty water, yes. um, which isn't nice. No. And many people, that's where they stop because they don't want to take the lid off and get down in the dirty water and say, you know, there's hurt here and we need some healing. Yes. And, um, but we would encourage, and, and we've seen it so many times, I mean, in our own relationship, but in so many, that once you're prepared to do that and then the healing can come and the freedom can come and you can move on and the relationship can change. And in, in Romans it says, as much as it lies within you, keep the peace. Mm. And um, sometimes we're always wanting the other person <laughs> to build that broken yeah. bridge. But actually, yeah. as much as it lies within you, do it. And, and it's interesting, we, we pray the Lord's Prayer um, I know, you know, Killy and I pray it. First thing we wake up in the morning, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done. And then what does it say? Forgive, forgive us, us our, our sins, sins as we forgive, forgive those who sin against us. And we're not always quick at doing that, are we? And yet there is a connection between us forgiving another person and yeah. receiving forgiveness yeah. from God. Mm. We've got some great friends who in their first year of marriage, they said every week they would ask each other a question. Is there anything you need to forgive me for? <laughs> this brave was, question. It was very brave, brave and very revealing. Question. But my goodness, it helped them to build yeah. a strong marriage. They talked about it and forgave, talked about it and forgave. And for me, one of the things that's helped me in our marriage is you can change yourself, but you can't change your partner. Yes. And when I came up against things that I didn't like or found annoying or whatever, I and was... there were plenty. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there was lots that I would sort of try to do to change Nikki around to my way of being and thinking. And actually, I realised, no, no, that it doesn't work. And it's usually the issue lies with me. Absolutely. And it's, I can change myself. And um, yeah, so true. we're all that, a work in progress. We are. And that leads on to the next component, which is wider family. And uh, family plays a really important part in marriages for good or for harm. It can be such a great strength where there are good relationships with different generations. And that's the way that we're meant to live. But of course, it, it requires understanding on both parts. Doesn't it? it requires yeah. parents to be able to let go of their children, to allow them to build their marriage, their family life in the way that they feel is right. And from the, from the children's point of view, it means that they are making their own decisions. They may ask advice from their parents, but they need to be able to, they need to make their own decisions. This is the way that we're going to do it, not this is the way that my mum and dad always did it, or, or etc. And, so the, and the other the, thing, the leave and cleave. Yeah, the leave and cleave. Totally. Yes. Yes. And the other thing is that obviously, for some people, family hasn't felt good. Yes. And um, and we once uh, another lovely couple, friends of ours, older, have amazing marriage. But they talked about how they both came from really quite um, dysfunctional family backgrounds, and then they got married, and then they had a really challenging marriage because they kind of didn't know how to do it. And they talked about their early years of marriage as marriage as a healing relationship. And that's a beautiful thing, that actually together, um, they allowed God to kind of um, restory, if you like, sure. their way of doing relationships. And, and they were really healed through supporting each other in that. And it, but it can still get, 
you know, we all face different complexities, don't mm. we? As, as our parents get older yeah. and their needs are greater and then you're having to respond to those needs mm. and how do you, as believers in Christ, uh, embrace your elderly parents mm. and their needs and should they come and live back with you? But what about the leaving and the cleaving? Mm. Mm. What advice would you give there? These, th I mean, these are really difficult questions that people face. But if I could say one thing about sort of just wider family relationships, I think one that we often neglect is sibling relationships. And sometimes, you know, in our parenting course, we know sibling rivalry can be the issue that parents are coming about for. But actually, the more we can, as parents, we can help our children children to get on with each other and the more as adults we can get on with our brothers and sisters because one day together we're going to be supporting looking after our elderly parents and and I am so grateful for my brother and my sister who together both of my parents have now died but when my when my mother was not in great health and we were wondering if she could still manage it was talking to my brother and sister and together we made a plan which and and Scylla was involved as well because she she had a great relationship with mm. my mother and with my brother and sister and you suddenly realize oh my goodness it's all we need to work at all these relationships yes. together if we're to really to support each other in families yeah and I think they are challenging but it's mm. so worth really continuing to seek to build sort of mutually supportive relationships. Absolutely. Well, it, it's valuing life. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's the circle of life. And, yeah. and one day we might need to be looked after, which is important. But that leads on to the next component. What's that? I'm going to say this one. Sex. <laughs> Go on. Good sex. Yes. Good sex. And we put it kind of, I mean, well, when we're doing the marriage course, it's sort of near to the end because we really feel it's, um, you know, our sexual relationship um, is impacted by every other part of our relationship and vice versa. And therefore, all the things that we've talked about so far on this circle are vital um, if we're to have a healthy, strong, growing, developing sexual relationship. And, um, and we, we look at sort of ways um, to, to, I suppose it's slightly countercultural because today, you know, in the media and films, it, it's like, oh, a man and a woman get together, they love each other, bam, it's all fantastic. And actually, that's so far from the truth. Actually, good sex is a journey within marriage that starts and you start on a journey of discovery and it's intended to go on for a lifetime. And it's, it's understanding each other isn't it yes. and and part of the idea on the on the marriage course is we introduce the topics but then we get the couple just to talk and the conversations are always private we make that absolutely clear to any couple who come they won't no group discussion but you will have plenty of opportunity to talk to your to your partner to your husband or wife and and on the topic of sex for some couples they haven't done that they really haven't sort of discovered what is important to each other, what turns each other on, what turns each other off, what do you like, what do you don't like. And once they start on that journey, sometimes very tentatively, with some sort of sense of vulnerability and shyness, but actually it can just lead to a make a huge difference in their sexual relationship and then as a result in their whole marriage. What would you say to any viewer who's listening now and uh, enjoying what you're saying, but they feel that they've, the spark has gone, mm. it's died. You mean in their in whole their relationship? Marriage. In their yeah. marriage. Their whole relationship. What um, would you say to I'd them? say come and do the marriage course. <laughs> Good. <laughs> well, because it's like, it's like, I think the best word to describe it is investing in your relationship. Yes. And you know, that's really when you're describing the spark having gone out, it's through a lack probably of understanding and investment and intentionality. And I think everybody understands the word investment today. They know, you know, that's going to reap benefits. And 
we would say going on seven date nights, which is effectively the, the marriage course, is like the best investment. And yes, it may be you'll have some challenging um, conversations, but that's probably what it takes to then reignite the connection. And really the spark is an emotional connection and an understanding and a fresh recognition of this amazing person that actually you are married to. And, and some couples have lost that just through the busyness of life. Yes. Maybe uh, work, maybe children, maybe lots of yes. other things being Unintentional. Unintentional, yes. exactly. So it's taking time to be able to, to talk, to, uh, to discover things about each other again. And you like, we will hear of of affairs that take place and sometimes they start in the workplace and it's simply because two people have got together and they've shared at an emotional level or they've yes. started sharing and that creates a spark which can then lead to sometimes unintended consequences yes. but that's exactly what we've got to apply in our marriage because this person they can become like a stranger to us and it's only as we start to reconnect finding out what's important to them, what's going on, what are they thinking and feeling, the spark can be reignited. And we, you know, we're convinced of that. The vast majority of marriages come apart because of a gentle drift yeah. apart. Yes. And, and we've got great friends um, who are married who talked about their marriage in such a helpful way. They said, you know, we realised we could be in one of three places. We could be just on together but on sort of parallel lines so we're going forwards together but we're slightly separate on separate sort of tracks or we could be moving apart or we could be moving towards each other absolutely and they sort of decided that they needed to take a rain check a lot and make sure they were moving together and i think that's what we would say is what keeps the spark is that you're intentionally moving together, not living your lives together in the same house, maybe sleeping in the same bed, but actually doing your own thing. Yes, uh, I like the, the story of the uh, little girl um, who came out of Sunday school and on the way home, the mother said, what did you learn in Sunday school today? And she says, oh, we learned all about the wedding in Cana. And the mother said, well, uh, what's the story about? Oh, and she says, look, when you get married, make sure Jesus is always there. Thank you so much for your insights. Um, the marriage book and uh, the marriage course. Mm. Thank you so much, Nikki and Scylla. Thank you for sharing this uh, wisdom with us. And thank you for being on Facing the Canon. Oh, thank Wonderful you. It's been be amazing. I hope that's inspired you. Please do look at the marriage course. Um, do it anyway, just to refresh your your marriage i i often think you know we take our cars don't we for an mot just to check things and sometimes we need to do that with our marriages but maybe our marriages need a little bit more help well at least try uh, the marriage course um, and i i'm sure you will find great benefit thank you very much for joining us on facing the canon